Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution for question 5 from the Jan 2009 POE Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Now, a bit of a disclaimer before we get into the question. The topic that's being tested here is non-profit organizations, or as we used to call it, clubs. So this particular aspect of it is not entirely on the POA syllabus at current, right? There is one piece of the question which asks you to prepare the receipts and payments account, which is on the syllabus. The other stuff is not. But I couldn't bring myself to just do one piece of an entire question because uh, I think that in the future they might actually bring back this entire topic. So I wanted the video to kind of be prepared for that. And there are students who are watching my videos who do syllabuses other than CSEC POA who still have to do all of these stuff associated with, with clubs, right? So, and of course, I mean, I don't like to skip out questions when doing solutions um, and, and prepping the videos. I like them to flow, right, in order, so they're easy to find. Anyhow, with all that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they're telling us, the treasurer of the St. Dominic's Cricket Club prepared the following receipts and payments account for June 30th, 2008. So we know a receipts and payments account is basically a cash book, but it's the non-profit organization name for a cash book. And there's only one column. There's no separate column for cash and bank. So receipts, money coming in on the debit side, balance at start, 720, rent of clubhouse. So you may be thinking, but Chris, rent is an expense. If we have a property and we rent it out, that's revenue to us. So this is the money received in respect of rent revenue for the clubhouse. Bar taking. So right, so the bar takings, takings is just sales, right? Cash sales and the bar. So of course, not these nonprofit organizations they don't buy things to resell or provide services to, to make a profit, right? They're simply there to provide a place for their members to come to engage in some activity. And in this case, it's a cricket club, right? So they actually rely on the next item, which is subscriptions, right? And subscriptions are basically membership fees. So that's the major source of revenue for this type of entity, right? And the bar taking, so these types of entities would normally have a cafeteria or a bar or a concession stand or a snack bar, whatever you want to call it. And the takings, there, that's when, that's when the members go and they buy food and they buy drink and whatnot. And of course, that will provide some sort of revenue for the entity as well. So that's what bar takings is. Now, on the payment side, we, had, we paid the bar attendant so that we had to pay someone to man the bar. Wages to grown men, utilities, payments to creditors. Ooh, that's interesting. Purchase of new lawnmower. All right. So then we have some additional information. So we have here opening and closing balances. July 1st, 07, June 30th, 08, right? Okay, so we have opening inventory for the bar and closing inventory. Subscriptions owing is an opening and closing balance. Subscriptions in advance, no opening balance, but a closing balance. Bar creditors, opening and closing balance. And fixed assets, non-current assets at cost, 70,000 and a question mark. Okay, interesting. Then they go on to tell us that depreciation on the non-current assets is to be written off at a rate of 10% per annum on cost. Okay, the first thing we are required to do is to copy the receipts and payments account and balance it. Okay, so as you can see, that's exactly what I've done. So you could compare this stuff across here to the receipts and payments account in the question itself. You could pause the video if you want, check it out, right? So all we have to do to balance it off is add up the receipts. That's going to give us 40920 If you want, you could plug it up in your calculator. Pause the video, plug it up in your calculator. Add the payments. That's going to give us 39700 right now. If, if you want, I'm not, I'm not doing it in my head. I could, but I'm just, Excel has a little thing down in the, in the little taskbar below where um, you could see the sum and the average on these things, right? So 397 and this side was 40920 So of course, we, we had more receipts than payments. So we're going to have money left over. That's the balance. And to find it, you simply subtract 4920 minus 39700. That's going to give us the balance carried on of 1220. So of course, now when we add the, the figures in the columns going down, we're going to get the same total and the account is in balance. And of course, don't forget to bring down, right? Sorry, bring down your 1220 on the debit side and we're good to go. So that's part A. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so part B is asking us to prepare the following for St. Dominic's Cricket Club a bar trading account and a subscription account. All right, so this was a kind of a mainstay. The bar trading account is simply a trading account for the bar, 
the inclusion of the word bar in front of the word trading used to confuse a lot of people, including myself, right? But when I kind of got over the confusion, I'm like, oh, it's just a trading account for a bar. Okay, no problem. So if you don't know how to do trading accounts, or you're a little rusty, I'm going to put a card up there to my link on how to do a trading account. And again, you know my usual style. I break things down into step-by-step, bit-by-bit pieces. I don't try to get you to memorize a whole format one time. That makes no sense in my opinion, right? So if you want, check out the video, then come back here. Or I'm just going to run through the format here as well, so you can stick around for that. Okay, so let's do the bar trading account first. I'm actually going to have to deviate from that, and I'll show you why. So don't forget to head up, St. Dominic's Cricket Club. Bar trading account, FYE means for the year ended, 30th June 2008. So normal trading accounts, we start with the sales. What are the sales? Remember up in the receipts and payments account, we had bar takings, 13,002. Right, that's our sales there. Okay, so we're going to put that here. Now, we had no returns, so we go straight to less cost of goods sold. Open in stock, so we go down to our balances. So we have bar inventory, 2300. That's the open in stock, so we're going to put that in. And purchases. Now, if we go up to the receipts and payments account, we're going to see payments to creditors, 7300. But that's payments to creditors. That does not necessarily mean that that's purchases. How do we know? We're going to go back down to the balances because if we have opening and closing balances for creditors or even just one of them, then we're going to use that in our mini control account to calculate purchases. All right, let's take a look. So we actually do have bar creditors, 1800 at start, 2700 at end. So what we need to do is we need to open up a, a mini well, or a summary creditors control account. So just give me one sec, let me switch across to that. Okay, so we have our creditors for refreshments account, right? Okay, or you can just put bar creditors, right? So the opening and closing balances were 1800 and 2700 respectively. Creditors is a liability. Balances are brought down on the credit side in liability accounts. So the opening balance of 1800 is gonna go there. Now, I'm omitting my date columns because I just, I don't think they were necessary in this case. The question didn't even ask for you to do this item. You could have done it as a side working, so don't worry about it too much. Now, the closing balance is 2700 and that's going to also be brought down on the credit side. But prior to being brought down on the credit side, you have to first be carried down from the debit side before we balance off the account. So that's going to be here. See, balance carried down, balance brought down. Okay, so now we're going to go back up to the receipts and payments account and we're going to pull the payments to creditors figure of 7300. So note, it's on the credit side here, which means in the creditors control account or the bar creditors account, it's going to be on the debit side. Right? And again, it's on this side because when you pay back your creditors, you are reducing the amount you owe them. Hence, you are reducing a liability. To record a reduction or a decrease in a liability, you have to debit the liability account. So that's the debit to creditors for refreshments or bar creditors account. The missing figure or the balancing figure rather is the purchases figure. How do we find that? We add up the items on the debit side and subtract whatever's on the credit side. That's gonna give us 8,200. And of course, now when we add going down on both sides, we get the same total of 10,000, right? Now that's the total, that's not the purchases figure or the balance, eh? the purchases figure is 8,200. So let's go back across now to the bar trading account and continue that. Right, so we're gonna plug in our purchases of 8,200. We're gonna add it to the opening inventory to get cost of goods available for sale. And now we are going to subtract the closing inventory, which of course is given to us in the question as $1,800, right? So we're gonna subtract that there. Uh, that's gonna give us the cost of goods sold of 8,700 and a gross bar profit of 4,500. Now, even though it just says bar trading account, we need to include all bar items, all items relevant or related to bar. So there's only one more item, which is the wages to bar attendant, right? So I know it then kind of looks like a trading and profit and loss account or an income statement. That's basically what it is, right? Even though it's called uh, a bar trading account. So that's going to be 3,000 subtracted from 4,500. It's going to give us 1,500 and that's the net bar profit, right? So when we come to do the income and expenditure account, their version of an income statement, we're going to use that figure in it, in the income section. Okay. The next thing they wanted us to do was a subscriptions account. So give me one sec, let me switch across to that screen. Okay, so subscriptions, like I said, is the major form of revenue for non-profit organizations for clubs. A revenue account, right, you credit to increase. So when it's earned, then you debit when it's, it's decreasing or when you are transferring it out. But long story short, right, it's a revenue account. If you want to check out my video on how to do revenue accounts, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check that out. Or you can follow what I'm doing here. 
So first thing to do is let's go across to the opening and closing balances, right? So we have two sets. We have subscriptions owing and subscriptions in advance. Now subscriptions is a revenue, like I just said. When it's owing, that means that revenue is owing to us. We've earned it, but we haven't collected it, which means it's accrued revenue, which is an asset. And assets have debit balances. So we're going to put the opening balance of 300 on the debit side. But there's also a closing subscriptions owing figure of 500. That too will be brought down on the debit side after the account is balanced off. But prior to being brought down on the debit side, you have to first be carried down from the credit side. So subs accrued, carried down, then brought down. Now, the subs in advance, right? So prepaid revenue is a liability. There's no opening balance, but there is a closing balance of 800 which means that that's going to be brought down on the credit side because prepaid revenues are liabilities and liabilities have credit balances. And of course, before you can be brought down on the credit side, you have to be carried down from the debit side. So we're going to put that in there as well. Now, there's also the matter of the subscriptions received. That's going to be found in the receipts and payments account on the debit side, the receipt side, right? Subscriptions, 25,000. So we receive money, we debit there to increase the asset and we credit where it came from. We're going to credit the subscriptions account, right? So that's, subs sorry, sorry. <laughs> I just put in the, the um, opening figure there, right? So it was zero. So you don't actually have to have this by the way, right? Okay. So like I was saying, we're going to put the receipts and payments account figure here, 25,000. So what's missing? would be the income statement figure, subscriptions earned. Of course, here they don't call it an income statement. It's an income and expenditure account. And that, of course, is going to be here. So how do we get that figure? Well, we add up the items on the credit side, add up whatever is there on the debit side, and subtract. And the difference will simply be the balancing figure, or in this case, the income and expenditure amount for subscriptions earned of 24400 Now, when we total up both sides, they'll both give us 25500 dollars and that's it for the subscriptions account. So now we'll take a look at the income and expenditure account. Okay, so as I mentioned, part C asks us to prepare an income and expenditure account for the St. Dominic's Cricket Club for the year ended June 30th, 2008, for six months. Okay, so again, an income and expenditure account is basically their version of an income statement. So we head up, name of the entity, name of the statement, the period to which it applies. FYE is for the year ended. So we just had up a section marked income. Now, where do we find the income? A good place to start looking is in the receipts and payments account on the receipt side. So of course, not the opening balance of the bank account. That's not income, that's just the balance in the account. Right, so we have the rent of the clubhouse and we had no opening or closing balances for that. So we're gonna put that there. The next item is the bar takings. Now remember, we did up an entire bar trading account just now and we saw that the net bar profit was $1,500. So that's why we do a bar trading account. So we could put the net bar profit inside of here, right? So this is kind of like a summary of all income and expenditure. Similarly for subscriptions, right? As you're seeing, we have subscriptions here, 25,000, but remember that's the money coming in and not necessarily the revenue earned. And we just saw that we did up a subscriptions account with opening and closing balances and the subscriptions received. And when you balance it off, we had subscriptions earned of 24,400. Now, there were no other revenue or income items, so we're going to take a subtotal there, 27,009. And now we're going to take a look at the expenditure items. So, again, if we go on the payment side of the receipts and payments account, so we have wages to bar tender. Now, that was already wrapped up in the bar trading account, so we're not going to worry with that. Wages to grounds men, right? So, that one we're going to put in 12,200. Then we have utilities, 2,200, and there were no opening or closing balances in respect of utilities, right? Now, payments to creditors was dealt with already. That's also not an expense, right? That's a payment and a liability. And purchase of new lawnmower. Now, that is a piece of capital expenditure, a purchase of a non-current asset. So this does not go in the expenditure section, but we do charge depreciation on non-current assets, don't we? Right, if we go back down to the balances, we'll see that the fixed assets at cost started off at 70,000. If we buy a new lawnmower, right, at 15,000, we're now gonna have a total value of $85,000. And the next line below that says that we have to depreciate fixed assets at a rate of 10% per annum on cost. So we are gonna find 10% of the 85,000, which is 8,500. So these are the only three items of expenditure. We're going to add them together to get total expenditure of 22.9. And when we subtract from the 27.9, we're going to get a surplus of income over expenditure of $5,000. So this is their terminology instead of profit. 
because once again, they are a not-for-profit or non-profit organization. And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question five from the Jan 2009 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you might find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.